52 years ago, on July 20, 1969, an epic-making event took place that entered the history of the exploration of the universe. The module of the American manned spacecraft Apollo 11 made the first successful landing on the moon. The astronauts reached the surface of the planet, stayed there for two and a half hours, successfully boarded the ship, and returned to Earth. In total, from 1969 to 1972, within the framework of the program of lunar exploration, there were six flights with landing and exit to the surface of the planet. The NASA project cost the U.S. $26 billion and was closed for lack of funds. Until the 21st century, nobody showed any special interest to the moon, and only when the idea of space expansion appeared, the whole world rushed to look for suitable springboards for colonization. They found them on two planets, on Mars, and on the moon. In the space agency, NASA decided that for the mission to Mars is not yet time and decided to choose the moon as its target and then resume the preparation of astronaut flights to the Earth's satellite after a 50-year break. It is planned to build a full-fledged space station and with the help of Starship to build a whole lunar base. And how it's going to happen, you will see in this video. The first lunar conquest program was named after the ancient Greek god Apollo. The second program was traditionally named Artemis and was estimated at $28 billion. As part of the program in 2024 in lunar orbit, plan to begin assembling a modular space station called Gateway and finish it by 2030. The key to the Artemis project is a spacecraft that will be able to regularly shuttle between Earth and the Moon, delivering astronauts to orbit and bringing them back. It was the Orion, a multi-purpose manned reusable spacecraft which in the early 2000s was developed for flights to the ISS and to deliver astronauts to the moon under another space program. In 2015, it was used to build a new unmanned spacecraft for the Artemis 1 mission, which is planned to be the beginning of space expansion. Orion consists of an emergency launch abort system, a capsule with living and working quarters for the crew, a service module with a supply of water and air for astronauts, solar panels and batteries to generate electricity. The launch vehicle for Orion will be the Giant Space Launch System, or SLS, which includes a 212 feet long main stage, two solid rocket boosters, and four RS-25 engines. With a total jet thrust of 39.1 mega newtons, the Space Launch System is the most powerful rocket ever built on Earth and our path to the moon will be the Gateway Station. It is planned to be built in a near rectilinear lunar orbit. The station will serve as a base for astronauts arriving from Earth, where they can live and work for several months, go from it to the moon for a short time, and return back. The tender to build a landing module to deliver astronauts to the lunar surface went to Elon Musk's SpaceX, NASA's main partner in the Artemis program. Once fully assembled, Gateway will include a Lunar Mission Control Center, modules for scientific research, and living quarters for a crew of four astronauts. At this point, there is already information on several lunar base module concepts, but first, let's talk about the lunar version of Starship, which will connect the station to the surface of the moon. In 2021, SpaceX was awarded the first contract by NASA to build a human landing system because it had already made significant strides in building launch hardware like the Raptor engine and had a very solid track record of successful projects like Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. So NASA took Elon Musk at his word that his staff would figure it out by 2025, and so far they're doing pretty well. Starship's first flight was in April 2023, after which it exploded, which wasn't great, but it wasn't the end of the world either. SpaceX can consider it an experience and make an even better attempt later this fall. The lunar starship that will fly to the moon will be very similar to the designs we've already seen tested at Boca Chica, but with a few key differences, the main one being that the lunar starship will never enter Earth's atmosphere, so it won't need a heat shield or the large sweep wings on the nose cone and tail of the upper stage. They will serve no function on the moon. After giving up the extra weight, a number of refinements will be required to function as a lunar craft, chief among them a new set of landing legs. Starship will need to have a wide, stable footing to land the way the Falcon 9 launch vehicle does. In addition, 
the ship will need landing thrusters as well. In several renders, we've seen them mounted on the side of the ship. They will be needed to control the ship as it descends to the lunar surface. SpaceX also needs to develop an elevator system for its lunar rocket. Because the lower two-thirds of the 165-foot-long craft is occupied by fuel tanks, the crew will need help to traverse the more than 100 feet separating it from the surface. This will also be necessary to deliver the payload to the lunar surface. Fortunately, gravity on the moon is one six of Earth's, so the elevator doesn't need to be particularly strong, just reliable enough. Above the payload bay should be the crew quarters. Everything we just talked about is a huge amount of work that SpaceX has to accomplish over the next two years. But there is another significant hurdle to overcome, but given the pace of the project, we think they'll pull it off. The Starship Super Heavy launch vehicle itself provides twice the thrust of the old Saturn V and can deliver twice as much payload, 100 tons, to the moon. The payload would be housed in a giant stainless steel spacecraft 29 feet wide and 165 feet high. Meanwhile, NASA has already conducted one uncrewed flight on the Artemis spacecraft with SLS and Orion to test flight hardware. And thanks to its stunning success in 2022, NASA is ready for the first Artemis test launch in 2024, in which four astronauts on the Orion spacecraft will fly around the moon. They will circle the moon and then return home for a water landing. So, it's 2030. The Lunar Gateway space station is ready. Starship is undocking, heading for the surface of the moon. NASA's Orion spacecraft has delivered four astronauts from Earth to the Lunar Space Station, who have been transferred to Starship HLS, Human Landing System. These are the first astronauts who will begin the work of building the first lunar base, marking the beginning of the industrial era on the moon. An era in which lunar dust shields, lava tube dwellings, reflective towers, and magnetic lunar railroads come into being, and human DNA is sent to storage facilities on the moon as a reserve in case of extinction. At this stage, satellites orbiting the moon are exploring lunar icy water, rovers are searching for different types of lunar ice, and drills are deployed at the South Pole to extract ice from beneath the moon's surface, as ice is needed to produce fuel, water, and oxygen. Other lunar rovers are exploring and mapping nearby lava tubes with 3D scanners. Tests are beginning to mix lunar loose soil, regolith, and plant-based glue to create a building material for 3D printing. The first Artemis habitation and life support modules are delivered to Earth at the moon's south pole. This will be followed by a treaty to preserve culturally significant sites of lunar history, such as Tranquility Base and the first footprints. A new command center and telecommunications complex can be seen under construction. During the construction phase of the Chinese and Russian International Lunar Research Station ILRS, Experiments are beginning to turn lunar regolith into living soil. The Artemis Base Camp crew refuel the uncrewed launch vehicle with lunar-made fuel. Test liftoff of the first vehicle powered by lunar rocket fuel. The Russian and Chinese ILRS program begins construction of its own lunar space station. A deep space spacecraft takes cargo and crew members to Mars. It makes interlunar and Martian flights. Maintenance takes place in orbit around the moon. From that moment, the terraforming of the moon begins. A large transparent dome is built, which acts as a greenhouse. It's called the Lunar World House. Plants help to recycle organic human waste and convert CO2 into breathable oxygen. Plants are genetically modified to be more resistant to radiation and to grow better in low gravity environments. Lunar bases grow faster and faster fueling the developing industrial age on the moon. To give an example, it takes a cargo ship 15 days to get from the US to Europe. It takes only three days to reach the moon. Two bases have already been established at the south pole of the moon, ILRS and Artemis. By then, more than 20 countries are present on the moon, from India and Mexico to Australia and Germany. There are two space stations in orbit. Above these lunar space stations are transfer nodes. Instead of using large spacecraft that need heat shields and air brakes to return to Earth, small shuttles are used to bring crew and cargo to the lunar surface. The Crewed Robotic Science Base, the International Lunar Research Station, 
is a city-sized settlement. Rovers patrol and explore the lunar surface. Lunar astronomy and Earth observation capabilities have been established at ILRS, and biomedical experiments have begun at Artemis. Teams of scientists and researchers are working on the base. Currently, there are facilities on the moon to produce the fuel used to refuel spacecraft flying from Earth to Mars. The moon even has facilities to train Martian astronauts. Students from universities around the world are beginning to travel to the moon for funded research missions. Lunar mining expands and mineral reserves are developed in territorial zones of national influence. Aluminum and titanium are mined, as well as the rare earth metals neodymium and lanthanum. Companies are rushing to extract the isotope helium-3 used to fuel fusion reactors on Earth and the Moon. It is not radioactive and does not produce dangerous nuclear waste, so you need not worry. Solar flares bombard the lunar surface with helium-3, so large quantities of it are found without any regulation. After many years, testing begins on the first asteroid mining mission. The Lunar Crater Telescope is put into operation to redirect an asteroid into lunar orbit. It is 3,200 feet wide and located on the dark side of the moon. Using the moon as a shield, the telescope is free from Earth's electrical interference and radio interference from the sun. The telescope in the crater observes the cosmos, collecting data about the earliest universe, the time before the first stars were born. A treaty is signed at the United Nations to limit mining on the dark side of the moon. As humans live longer on the moon and on Earth, a cosmic Creole language begins to form, and cultures mix and change. This creates the first extraterrestrial space culture with an accent and language. Humanity's lunar outpost has evolved into a self-sufficient colony. Facilities are automated, robotics require no human intervention, terra domes for terraforming, nuclear fusion facilities, mining robots, and access to materials on asteroids all allow humans to transition from the lunar industrial age to the modern information age. Focusing on tourism, astronomical research, scientific exploration, and sending humans further into the solar system. Solar sail spacecraft, which use sunlight to propel the sails, are now equipped with lasers. The lasers target the sail, moving it through space. A laser sail spacecraft launches from Earth using ground-based lasers on Earth and the Moon. Construction begins on asteroids placed in orbit around the Moon as platforms for building lunar space elevators, eliminating the need to launch chemical rockets. Humanity's data and DNA are sent off-planet for storage in lunar vaults. These vaults store and protect biological data and all knowledge of Earth and humanity. Also stored there is the cryogenically frozen genetic material of 9 million species of earth crops, seeds, plants, fungi, and animals, as well as human DNA. The data warehouse protects humanity's digital knowledge, programs, culture, and history. If something happens on Earth, humanity will have the tools and knowledge stored on the moon to rebuild. This is what the future holds for us on the moon. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. It's very important for our content to reach more people. If you liked our content, you will probably like other videos on our channel. For example, about colonization of Mars, so subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.